Greetings, Laddingtons. I am back. I'm back from a week under a severe bubonic plague man cold. But um, yeah, I'm feeling a bit better now. And I thought to get back to the video production by getting into good old Warhammer Total War 2. Because we have a new DLC, which I talked about in the recent Forest video log. I talked about Dark Darkblade. If you haven't already checked that out, I encourage you to do it. Just uh, search on my channel for Dark Darkblade or... Um, yeah, it's like two videos... Um, in the latest um, playlist, so you can check it out so you know who Mollus Darkblade is, so you get a good feel for the books, etc. Um, so, as you can see, we have a new epic background here. Unfortunately, I showed in a recent video log titled Snow at Last, but it started raining the day after, so uh, we, uh, we do not have snow in uh, middle Scandinavia now. But we have a uh, snow here at least, so it's uh, something, I suppose. Anyway, let's get into the campaign. Also, again, thank you to Jan for gifting this fine DLC to me. Most heartfelt gift. So, first and foremost, you can see here, they have a uh, new art for each character. So you see Tyrion here is looking much more aesthetic than he did before. Same thing with... Uh, Alith Anar. So, very good job on uh, this. And now, who is this mad cunt, you might ask? Son of Hagrith. Son of Hagrith. Mollus Darkblade. Here he is, the man himself, the man of the hour. So, what do we have here? Yes, starting position, apparently here, down in the Sea of Dread. Uh, even though his hometown is up uh, well in Nagaroth in uh, Hagegriff, but I'm sure we can get there eventually. So initial challenge hard. Um, yeah, it's it's good, an extra challenge. Then I will play on legendary because I've played enough of this to be um, yeah to want the strategic challenge. But uh, I don't know if I will actually make a series on this or if you. If I will just uh, make a video, uh, an overview of it, having a look at it. So basically a lot of uh, different traits here. He's possessed by the demon Tsarkan. As I mentioned in the book review slash uh, forest video log. Uh, allied with the witch king himself. Here is the witch king Malekith for those of you who are not aware. And, um, yeah, extra income from mines. Always good, I suppose. And then, uh, cheaper cold one, knights and chariots. Good stuff, good stuff. So, I suppose we'll just get in to it. Jaga. A demon cruel beyond compare, imprisoned by fools who sought to harness his dark might. All soon perished. Still, the demon could not slip his chains. Millennia passed, then mortal greed found him once more. The drinker of worlds was loose. Yet, in a twist of fate, Zarkhan's liberator became only another cage. Raging at their undesired bond, demon and host enact vengeance upon this world. All shudder, save for the Skaven, deep in their under-empire. Noisome warlords plot to seize this hell-sent power. The Eshin master assassin must hunt it down, else lose his night lord's capricious favor, a fate every Skaven fears. So Snitch's poison blades will find their target, whomever it may be. 
The Witch King knows well where Tarkan lurks, for its host dances to his tune. Malekith promises the Elixir to subjugate the Demon Shade, if the fabled scrolls of Hertati are first brought to him. Tarkan's possession has cost Malus Darkblade dearly. He cannot refuse. To the rat-infested Southlands, he must go. Rat Deathmaster and Druki Tyrant, bound for battle, but neither knowing it yet. All the world will quail when shadow meets blade. Though Hadgrif remains under my control, the Witch King has dispatched me here to gather the scrolls of Hakati. I must quieten my mind and let nothing distract me. Just off these shores, a black ark stands ready to unleash devastation upon my enemies here and across the waters in the Southlands. The jungles and mountains of this place appear to house many sites of arcane power. I shall harness them for my lord Malekith, and he will grant me what was promised. Shut up, demon! Curb your thirst for souls. The Ursur are mine to annihilate. The islands will not protect them. My affliction is both a terrible curse and an immeasurable source of power. But soon I will have greater control. I will do what I must to ensure that I return to Nagaroth in triumph. Alright, another epic introduction by a um, very cool and uh, soothing voice the narrator has. Um, not um, this particular Malus, but the guy in the introduction uh, sequences. Always uh, very well done. And uh, some cool artwork as well there. I think one of those shots will be the thumbnail for this video. And uh, as I said in a recent video on... Warhammer, they are bringing back the old world, and this, what we see here, is actually the old world, so um, it's uh, highly joyous for all true Warhammer bros. And uh, this particular mission is actually uh, an addition to uh, the story of Mollus Darkblade, so to speak, so this isn't part of the books, but I really like that they can use this opportunity with uh, this game to uh, yeah, tell another Mollus Darkblade story. Um, so let's look at how they play here. Okay, so we need to take elixirs. I have come for you, Asher. You are weak here, far from home. Your powers dwindle while mine grow. <laughs> that is noted, so yes, of course. My lord, Tarkan is a powerful demon. That resides within you. His control is strong, but with his curse comes great powers and abilities to use against your enemies. Yes, so as I was going to say, the Dark Elves and High Elves are bitter enemies, and uh, their rivalry continues on even in the colonies. So uh, up here we have an elixir and it costs us 600 to um, I suppose regain control of ourselves so um, yes some different gameplay mechanics there if we let him have too much of um, say the demon inside so they'd also made an update to uh, the um, black arcs so apparently this guy can level and stuff, and he can also attack coastal settlements. So what I will do, I will keep this 
episode quite short because this is just an overview and you might ask why do I not make let's plays on Total War? Yes, it's because Total War is more of an acquired taste as opposed to as opposed to Assassin's Creed where you can get into the game and you understand the game more um, at once. So uh, I want to continue on the Assassin's Creed Unity Let's Play when we are in Paris and running around there. So I think it's more easily accessible for most subscribers to, uh, to watch. That's why I want to continue there. And then as a celebration of hitting 100,000 subscribers, I want to play The Witcher 3 and that's also a very good game to showcase the, um, well, the power of gaming in a good way that you can uh, show um, European folklore in a very attractive way. So Malarnur is also a new sort of character, he's a beastmaster. So that being said, I will just get into battle here against Amoner. I don't think it will be any any problem here at all. Um, actually, he's going to put him there and uh, put him in there and then we charge. Okay, so we don't get any support here except that we have the Soul Rain Guy Cauldron and Kane's Lash, but I do believe we should be able to have this anyway. So let's get into the battle. Right, we are in the battle. And also, I forgot to mention that we do have one last episode on the Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition Vlad campaign. Uh, that I will do before doing The Witcher, so um, yeah, a lot of gaming as of late, but worry not, I have some regular videos incoming as well. It's just that, again, I've been sick in the bubonic plague, so I haven't really been able to do uh, any videos. Now, let me concentrate here on winning this battle. So, here we have a new unit, a Medusa. That is um, straight from Greek myth and uh, hopefully, no, they are not targeting her. They are uh, some Illyrian archers. They are just standing there getting absolutely wrecked by our uh, dark shards here. Then we also do have cold ones, cold ones. and ha! These are not cold one chariots. These are scourge runner chariots. We will actually place you over there so we can flank, and then I suppose we'll keep the cold one cavalry there too, so we can get around. Uh, the high elves are quite good in uh, close combat. And also on, um, well, at range, since they have so many missile units. But we'll try to um, make the most out of this situation. So here we have Tsarkan, Lord Ability. But I don't want him to get overly possessed, so... Uh, and these madcans, they charged in directly. I'm not sure why, uh, since they're light cavalry and they will get wrecked. And now, hopefully... The blood prize. Okay, so he can... Do a few different things there. Okay, so here I can't charge in there unfortunately and they're absolutely wrecking us not good not good at all but uh, it is what it is so you see here I can't charge in because they have pikes or spears 
But I need to charge in because otherwise they will get shot to bits. Right, Laddingtons get back into the action. And I will have to disengage with my with my dark charge, so uh, they don't get stuck into close combat. Aha, our Medusa has gotten trapped there. Boom. And our cold ones. <laughs> Worst unit ever. They uh, charge and they get routed by some... Uh, normy Northern Sea God. Absolutely blasphemous, if anything. And here on the right hand side, I have some magic from um, the Black Ark. So the dilemma I have here is the blood price. I think I will actually do it, even though it might cause uh, Sarkan to have more influence over me, but it will have to be worth it, because I need to win this battle. Alright, I utilized a little edit there, so we can get closer to the conclusion of the battle and uh, we're out on thin ice so I have to pay the blood price again so we can kill Amon here it is the only course of action the only reasonable course of action I mean of course then we can actually invoke Tsarkan and then uh, health and fatigue are restored so that is one option we do have could do it if uh, I feel the need for it, but um, it is looking quite good anyway. Okay, victory, good. Uh, what's a tight one? I was a bit unsure I would actually do it, but uh, the superior skill of uh, Moll's Dark Blade here um, gave us the victory. So yeah. There we are, Pyrrhic victory, boom. And we will of course we occupy will it. You. We could loot and occupy, that would be Treasures what Mollus would have done, but uh, I don't want to damage any buildings, so... We gained a banner there as well, which we can use. Okay, hostile takeover. The wealthiest dreadlord of Hagrip sent you a large sum to bribe you into giving up on your Drachau position. The money would certainly be useful and boost your treasury considerably, as it is currently almost empty. Once the mission for Malekith is complete, taking back what is yours should not pose much of a problem. However, the mines of Hag Griff could keep the expedition running for some time yet. Okay, so we're being presented with a dilemma here. So give up on Hargrave and focus on the expedition. Also 50 in growth for 5 turns and 20,000 plus in treasury. That's quite a bit. Or we could exile this filth. Everything under control. Um, okay. This is a hard question indeed, but I do believe we will take the money and uh, then come back and kill the usurper once we get back to Nagaroth. So, boom. Take the money. Okay, so this bar shows how much influence Tsarkan has over Malus. Some good... Uh okay, we must drink elixirs to keep the demon at bay. Aha, and Sarkan can give us uh, some missions there as well. So it seems that they have... Uh, has full possession, my lord, making you unmatched on the battlefield. However, your commanders and warriors are more distrustful of you. 
resulting in reduced loyalty and troop replenishment. By taking the elixir, you can reduce possession and increase your control. Right, so we can take an elixir there. And uh, yes, I was just going to say, um, finishing up this episode, that they have made a very good job of it, as far as I can see, uh, with a lot of new gameplay mechanics and really put in effort into the story. So uh, yeah, just by playing this far, I can definitely say it's a good addition. You will not possess me again! <laughs> and they're having some back and forth bands there, as they have in a book, I might add. Uh, Good times, good times. So anyway, I will just uh, leave it at that and uh, and um, call it a day. But uh, thank you for watching and uh, tomorrow back on regular video making routine. So look forward to that. And lastly, I do have written an article on uh, some new releases for Legio Gloria. So it's available at thegoldenone.se link in the description. So now, XOXO, boo!